Hello and welcome to another Raspberry Pi tutorial by me, the Raspberry Pi Guy. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you some Python basics. And this tutorial is going to be part of my Getting Started with Python series. And so, I'm sure there will be more episodes to come, but this is going to be episode one. What I'm going to show you in this tutorial is what Python is and what's so great about it. Uh, as I said, I'll show you some basic commands like how to print text on, on the screen. And I'll show you how to use Python on your Raspberry Pi. I'll also tell you some of Python's history and why it's so easy to use and some of the differences between, say, Python and C, which is, which is another programming language. What you're going to need in this tutorial is a Raspberry Pi with a keyboard and mouse. doesn't need to be connected to the internet for this tutorial, and you're going to need the Raspbian distro installed on an SD card. And if you haven't already got that, then I suggest you take a look at my other tutorial called Preparing an SD for the Raspberry Pi, where I cover that in great length. So, also, you don't necessarily need to program on your Raspberry Pi. Sure, the Raspberry Pi Foundation designed the Raspberry Pi with, with aims of getting more children interested in programming, but you can easily program on, say, your desktop or your laptop. All you do is go to Google Python and download it and it's very simple to use and there's plenty of tutorials. What I suggest you do is you buy yourself a book like Michael Dawson's Python Programming 3rd Edition for the absolute beginner. That's a really good book that I've followed and really useful and it just takes you through Python step by step. So I'd also like to thank David Ryan for redesigning my logo. You might remember a few weeks ago I had a competition for who could, who could redesign my logo and I'd pick the best one. And David sent me in this awesome logo that you'll be able to see on my channel very soon. And I just love it and I can't, I can't thank him enough. Thanks for all the other guys who sent in their logos and suggestions for logos. But sadly you didn't make the final cut. But I'm grateful for your effort. Um, I, can I also thank you all for the amazing amount of emails that I receive every day about people's projects, questions about my tutorials and suggestions for what I should do next. So keep those coming. Uh, my email address is theraspberrypiguy at gmail.com and I'm really interested to hear all of your ideas and what you're doing with the Raspberry Pi. So, let's get started. As you may have already noticed, this is my new logo, the Raspberry Pi Guy, designed, as I said, designed by David Ryan. And uh, I think it looks really good. And you also might notice that I'm actually on a new monitor now. It's a full HD 24-inch um, monitor, so you don't need to worry about my abysmal quality analog video ones on my old TV that I was using before. First, what is programming? Programming is basically getting your computer to do stuff. Now that's not the most technical definition, but it's probably the most accurate one. By learning Python, or any other programming language, you're going to be able to create a program, whether it's a game, or a small utility, or a business product with a full featured graphical user interface. It's going to be all yours, something you made, and it will do just what you told it to do. Python is, and also other programming languages, is not only amazingly productive, but it's great fun once you've learned how. You can have lots of fun um, building your own programs that do specific things, like lots of programming projects going on with the Raspberry Pi at the moment. Bird boxes with cameras in them, etc, etc, etc. People designing loads of games with the Raspberry Pi. But, and uh, once you get good at Python, or as I said, any other programming language, you'll be able to do whatever you want with it. So, introducing Python. Now, Python is a powerful yet easy to use programming language that was first released in 1991. Here is the Python logo, this one and this one, and I'm going to explain the difference between idle 3 and just normal idle in a minute. And I say powerful yet easy to use. It's powerful in the sense that it's powerful enough to attract developers from all around, such as Google, IBM, Microsoft, and NASA. But it's also really easy to use because everything's color coded and the commands are quite simple to learn. And that's why it's one of the best initial program languages to learn because it's really simple and you can use it as a stepping stone to future programming languages. So. What are the other programming languages? Well, there's tons of other programming languages. There's some of the most well-known ones are C and C Sharp, Java, Visual Basic, 
and the list goes on and on and on. But, as I said, the difference is, if you plunge straight into C, you're going to find it quite difficult because the commands aren't as, as clear as Python. And Python is what's considered a high-level language, and this means that it's cl as close to the human language as possible, not the machine language. If you go to C and then other lower-level languages, you're going to find it a lot harder to interpret. Whereas with a bit of basic Python knowledge, if you look at a program, it's going to be quite easy to interpret. So, what's the difference between idle 3 and idle? Now, idle is Python 2.6.6, and this idle is Python 3.1. Now, 2.6.6 idle, that is the older version of Python. But because so many people learn with the older version of Python, um, it's been kept in and and people do find it quite hard to adjust to the newer version of Python. But if you're, if you're starting to learn Python now, then definitely go for the newer version. There's a, most things in between idle and idle 3, in just beginner use, you're not going to notice them. There's a few commands that are different, like the print command, which we'll have a look at later, but not a lot. So largely, if you write a program in idle and then try and run it in idle 3, then they should be largely compatible. So what we're going to do now is double click on idle 3 and wait for it to boot up. You're going to get a box similar to the one like this. Now the camera isn't placed very well at the moment so I'm just going to zoom in. But what you're seeing now is the Python shell. Now the Python shell is an interactive session that you can type in whatever you want with the keyboard and then press enter and it will do that command immediately. However, you can't really make programs in the Python shell. So what you do is you go to file and then new window. And then you can make fully fledged programs and save them and run them. But it's the interactive session is quite good for just messing around with commands and learning some basic stuff. So let me just zoom in for you.